see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, committee members. My name is Angel Torres, senior engineer at the South San Francisco Department of Public Works Engineering Division. Tonight's presentation is on the Pavement Management Program 2020 Street Surf Seal Project. Besides the pavement preventive maintenance surface seal and restriping work, this project includes safety and traffic calming enhancements in the Paradise Valley Pex Lot neighborhood. The traffic calming improvements to be installed have a long history of planning and community collaboration, beginning with the neighborhood meetings held on July 4th, 2018, November 27th, 2018, and again on August 21st, 2019. The outcome of these three neighborhood meetings was summarized in an update presented to City Council on February 19th, 2020. For tonight, um, this evening's presentation will cover the upcoming surface seal and traffic calming improvements. I will provide a brief overview of the project covering the location of and proposed improvements that will benefit all San South San Francisco traveling public, including vehicles, bicyclists, and pedestrians. This project includes surface seal preventive maintenance of local streets as recommended by MTC Street Saver. Candidate street segments for surface seal improvements was selected by Street Saver, were inspected and verified by the design team and engineering staff doing pre design and design. Surface seal is the application of a mixture of water, asphalt emulsion, crushed rock, and additives to an existing asphalt pavement surface. When the surface seal is first placed, the surface is tender and can be marked up by sudden turning movements. Once placed, surface seals need four to six hours to set or harden before the road is open for traffic. Surface seal will, the surface seal will provide a fresh, dark, durable, smooth, non-slippery pavement surface. Access to streets and driveways will be restricted during construction with temporary no parking signs posted on barricades 72 hours in advance. Advanced notification flyers will also be handed out informing residents of the scheduled day in which the contractor will be working in front of their residence, installing the surface seal during which access in and out of their driveways will be restricted until permitted by the contractor. This project is also installing speed cushions. Some of the advantages of placing speed cushions include potential to reduce traffic speeds and cut through traffic. The addition of these proposed speed cushion locations on Rockwood Drive and B Street has been recommended by the Traffic Advisory Committee, TAC, and the final location is verified by engineering staff. The addition of the combined traffic calming features for this, these neighborhoods in Paradise Valley and Pexla, as recommended by the DKS traffic engineer designer, was presented to the neighborhood recently in several community meetings, which I mentioned previously. The addition of ADA compliant ball ball curb ramps at these key intersections will provide safer pedestrian access across Hillside Boulevard. The ball belts will provide pedestrians with a shorter crossing distance. I think we lost him. Greater visibility yeah. of possible oncoming vehicular traffic. Are you guys still there? I, yeah. I thought I heard you guys say. We're losing you. Okay. I'll go back to the previous one. Thank you. The addition of ADA compliant ball belt curb ramps at these key intersections will provide safer pedestrian access across Hillside Boulevard. The ball belts will provide pedestrians with a shorter crossing distance and greater visibility of possible oncoming vehicular traffic before attempting to cross the street. The addition of speed feedback signs is intended to remind drivers of the posted speed limit and help encourage drivers to reduce their speeds. These are some of the locations where we're installing speed feedback signs.
This concludes my brief project overview presentation of the 2020 Surface Seal project. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Are there any questions from the committee? Well, uh, uh, I have one. Yeah. Okay, Frank. So, well, Angel, if, if I may, um, when, you're, when they're doing that surface scene project, are they going to do the full street at the one time? Are they going to do half one side of the street to allow people on the one, to park on one side and then do the other side the next day or what? Frank, um, I, I believe um, a lot of these residential streets will not permit us to do the, the, the two phase as you're proposing. Um, on the more um, arterial or collector streets, um, we'll go back to the location um, on Hillside and, and um, Sister Cities Boulevard, Airport Boulevard. Those, those uh, larger, you know, more congested, more traffic impacted streets, we will do a, a two-phase process. Yeah, as I see there's lots of streets that are all connected together in Paradise Valley area. And so shutting them all off at the one time would be terribly inconvenient for everybody. Understood. And we will work with the um, contract as well as the construction management team. Mm -hmm scheduling it so that if you don't, you know, we provide access um, at all times yeah. with the exception of the streets that are getting the treatment that particular day. And okay, Tommy, did you have a question? Yeah, yes, for all these streets um, that don't have bike lanes marked, what will they be, will any be added? Because if we're, you know, over redoing the surface, we have an opportunity to add them. Um, right now, the way the project was put together, we're replacing it time. We, um, we are not um, scheduled to add any additional bike lanes on this project, only replace what has already been uh, designated. Okay. Is there a project um, where we could add bike lanes to the surfaces, go back and do that? We, we have a project, um, let me see if I can get to that slide. So um, this is the work plan right now for, for this current year where we um, have two projects, one is the green streets, those are the, the, the streets designated for the surface seal project. Then the blue is the rehab streets. For 2020, um, this is what we think we can um, cover with our budget. We're, we're having some, some budget issues. Prices are, are, are booming right now. So it's making it difficult to stay uh, on track with what we're hoping to accomplish. Um, but in 2021, this coming year, we're planning on doing um, more streets in the Old Town um, neighborhood with you know, quite a few rehab streets. Um, I think we are also on this particular project looking to see if we can do some traffic improvements, which um, we, you know, we didn't get a chance to do on the 2020 project. But in the 2021, we've, we've asked the design consultant to consider um, some of the traffic improvements um, and make some recommendations. Whether we will have budget to be able to do that work, we haven't decided yet. Um, it'll be based on what their recommendations are. So do, we, with a recommendation, normally we, you know. Would a recommendation from the BPAC um, help? Because personally, I really support, especially the repayment of our streets. Um, I know my street, which is a main thoroughfare, uh, really needs to be um, sealed or repaved or somehow um, as it improves the quality of life and the look of the city overall. And um, also to increase the number of, of bike lanes, if we can, in the same project would, I think, be, you know, taking two birds with one stone, as it were. 
Um, I think I think at this point, um, I want to see what designers recommend because they're going to look at our bike head master plan to see um, which particular streets we can um, introduce the you know the bicycle lanes that are part of that bike lane master plan bike Actually, pedestrian master plan if, if i can Once just they, add angel sorry um so uh chairperson gore so what uh planning is also working on is obviously the the next iteration, the next draft of the uh, bike and ped master plan, the active SSF. Uh, so while I believe um, Angel's project has already been, the funding has already been committed to just these uh, resurfacing and rehabilitation efforts, uh, BPAC's recommendation will, will be much more impactful if we have BPAC make recommendations and uh, on as we progress with the bike and ped plan. I know that's something that we've workshopped previously with the with this committee, uh, but uh, that's something that we're taking up in the next month or so to complete that effort and have it go to planning commission for review and approval. And I actually wanna bring it back to BPAC just to kind of make sure we have uh, a more clearly defined uh, bike and ped master plan that improves connectivity of in you know, identifies the opportunity areas to the, which the community and our BPAC would, you know, know a lot better on where we can put in some more additional bike lanes. So I think that would be the best avenue to go forward with recommending bike lanes in certain streets. Uh, so we should consider taking that effort when when we when we come back into the uh, bike and ped master plan work. Are there other questions from the committee? Okay. Hearing Thank you none. very much. Thank you very much, Angel. Okay, we like to I'd like to move to item number two. Um, uh, is this is just a comment on the special meeting that happened in last week? Yes, uh, that's a staff update. We just wanted to, uh, uh, given that it was a, a little bit difficult for uh, uh, other folks' schedule, so um, we were going by a, a council member's schedule for that meeting, So, um, but we are welcome if other members of the committee would want to do that walk, walk about, walk through of the uh, newly constructed rails to trail segment, like we were absolutely welcome to it and we can schedule that for another uh, another time. So I actually wanted to just recap what we went through and hang on. So uh, in the special meeting uh, last week, uh, last Thursday, we, uh, I believe uh, from BPAC was Frank uh, that attended and uh, members of the Parking Place Commission and Traffic Safety Commission uh, were all, also joined in the tour uh, and all we did was in this highlighted segment of uh, the former ra uh, rails, um, <clears throat> the rail spurs, uh, starting at Roebling Road, we uh, took a little walkthrough of what has been constructed um, and kind of anticipated, a, a, a kind of discussed where this will go, given that uh, there are other projects such as 499 Forbes that are coming down the pipe uh, for approval and they are looking to also uh, um, uh, construct and be consistent with what's been built. So I just wanted to show uh, a few photos of what is out there now and, and prior to that. It, so this is something that the developer uh, at this location had, uh, had worked with the city to, to improve and to create this path, this bike and ped trail um, that's uh, that's going to be much more available to the public as these projects come in and get developed. Um, so, and is there um, a way we can access? Uh, we can get information on how many people use the tra a trail like this, um, and what um, time they're being it's being used. Is that? 
Uh, that's a good question. I don't believe, well, at, at, at this point, even though it is open to the public, it was just that, you know, uh, activity in the east of 101 has, has severely dropped because of the pandemic. And I believe the, our party of uh, Jen, how many were we? About like 10 to 12 people walking that trail. And we were the only people there for, I'm, I'm sure we were the only people there at that point that day so um it's very very lo low volume activity at this point uh but uh with this first segment the idea is to just have this space available for anyone who's in this area uh and actually just going back to this one and so between Roebling and Allerton to the uh to the east um this would connect to the existing uh uh, uh Head and bike path uh, within the Gen N Tech campus. So it's, it's a pretty long, so a, a, this segment is about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 uh, miles. Um, and it's meant to give, you know, workers in this area, any residents that come out to this side of the city, like an, an, a good place to kind of walk and be outside. So. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't believe anyone is counting right now how many people are using it at this <laughs> moment. Um, I have another question or, uh, I mean, there seems to be a lot of activity and I, I think a lot of great activity over on the east side um, as far as building new areas for recreation and um, I think it would be great if we could find a way to highlight that in some sort of city press release to let the community know that, you know, although it's great for the employees over there, if you want a place to go on the weekend to bike or walk, this is available to you and to maybe highlight that so that so that our citizens are aware of what's what's available for them for exercise. Yeah. No, uh, that's that's something we will consider. It's just uh, because it's it was one of the first ones as part of the development down there that um, had constructed and fully developed that part of the rails to trails that it's also well um, within this 0.3 mile stretch, um, the most built up part is the one that that specific developer here had done and the rest is sort of just a paved path and nothing else really. So it's not, we're not quite there yet to start announcing, hey, we have all of this available recreation area um, because it's, um, it, 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 it falls on the next developer um, and the next parcel to kind of the, continue this, the, the green spaces and improve upon this. So this is the, the photos we have here are the nicest parts of it. The rest are just one paved asphalt area. So, well, I, I mean, I mentioned getting eyes on it because if you do need help from the community to convince um, if they know it's there and they're using it, then they'll be they'll be able to support um, help you to support, you know, uh, expanding it, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. No, that's 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 valid. And then we'll, we'll definitely look into ways to kind of promoting at least it, especially this first rails rails to trails <laughs> segment and then uh, Frank, you were there. Do you have any comments? What What did you think? Yes, I do. Um, I, I'm delighted to see. I've, I have a long history with this segment, you know, working for the city and uh, knowing it as a, a dump, a, a tri sheep uh, with uh, broken down vehicles, tires, all people pumping garbage back there. So it was such a delight walking through there, seeing it clean, pretty, with these improvements. So I'm delighted. It's unfortunate, like uh, Chris mentions, it's only a short stretch, and it really doesn't get you from A to B because we're waiting for our reels, the trails conversions, which is, and I, I agree with your point of advertising it later when it means something, when we can connect it to hopefully the Bayfront Trail or even uh, the whistling, um, the, the wind harp or other uh, features out there, it'd be great. Uh, having, but mentioning that, we were also joined in the walk besides Carol Matsumoto, we were joined with Sharon, Sharon Reynolds, the former director of Parks and Rec and the uh, current director, Greg, um, um, Greg, I can't remember his last name. Anyhow, uh, well, they've been 
Thank you, Miliari. With, with them being out there, I think that they're getting your point where Parks and Rec is the best ones in the city to advertise this as a recreational resource. So they're aware, they were in attendance, so I think things are looking up in that regard. Are there any other comments uh, for that any of the other any other members would like to make about this uh, project? Hi, it's Christina Anderson. I just wanted to apologize for not being there for the walk. I was in the hospital, and those are the nicest pictures <laughs> of that little area there. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, where they were basically the developer had ensure that there's water retention or water flow uh, that's going to... Yeah, that's what I was concerned yeah. about. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it's the one that's most built out of any other segment of this. So. And are there lights? Yes, there are. Um, they are actually... So when we were there, it was too, still too bright out, but they have installed pretty much the whole length of this, right, Frank, do you, if you recall? Yes, uh, that are LED lights. LED lighting along the along the both sides of this uh, this walking path and biking path, and they activate when and there's mo it's motion sensor. Yeah. So there's a lot of yeah. So there's amp ample lighting for it. Okay. Um, any other comments? Well, thank you. I'm I'm um, very pleased with the progress that's being made over there. And yeah. hopefully it will be a, a place that not only the, the employees that work over there use, mm -hmm. but the, all the population in the, in the city. Yeah, no, and, uh, and we welcome if you uh, want uh, staff to, you know, to host another walk like that at a more convenient time, we're open to it. So just let us know, uh, uh, give us some availability. It's just that we were pretty tied to our 827 date and time uh, uh, so we weren't able to modify it for a much later time for when people are available so but we're happy to walk you through that and any other kind of developments that's going on on that that side of 101. Great thank you uh, item number three and I don't Yeah, the outdoor dining program. The outdoor dining update. Sorry, I don't know why I, I screen shared away. <laughs> oh, it's the same item. It's the same PowerPoint. There we go. So, uh, thank you all for. Um, I know I workshopped this with the VPAC and other committees. Uh, so this the city has as of uh, actually as of tomorrow we will have about eight businesses that have applied and will have completed their application review process with us to set up outdoor dining uh, along pretty much the, the, the available parking spaces in their each restaurant's frontage. Um, so I can give you a breakdown of, uh, but I just, I wanted to show this to you first. Um, uh, so th this is a, what was installed at Amora and on 713 Linden, and they have begun their side, sidewalk uh, dining area and I believe they've already constructed a platform to uh, further enable the, uh, comfortable dining outdoors in this, uh, in this location. Um, and it's something that we are seeing uh, restaurateurs in the downtown um, are, are pursuing is to, you know, com to accommodate uh, ADA uh, ADA and, and to kind of uh, make sure that there is a uh, level, uh, plat level uh, dining area that they actually elect to construct platforms or decks on the, on the, on the, on the spaces that's created by these uh, barriers. So city staff, uh, planning and public works staff have gone in to install these uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks. And, and this is what these are now at uh, we once we've installed them, we leave it up to the restaurateurs to kind of you know be creative on what they can use this space for, and they're so far they're responding. So um, I think by tomorrow we will have um, we definitely will have about eight eight businesses that have applied for this, 
and I believe um, I believe about six or seven of them will be available or and open for outdoor dining as early as this Friday. So it's it's something that we knew there was a demand for and um, and the restaurants are responding and looks like their their cre creativity is also kind of coming to the surface. Um, there are some, it also something that internally we've been uh, waiting for is that this will reveal the bad actors and, uh, and the, the good actors and we'll, we'll have a plan for the bad actors. The ones that uh, kind of ov overbuilt their deck uh, and we'll, we'll just have to deal with them as they, they come up. But uh, we've tried our best to essentially, you know, guide them through the process and, you know, like things that we need to maintain such as the free flow of any kind of like uh, of water uh, and keep the gutters clear so that their deck has to be built above that and not obstruct any kind of uh, any water that flows through the street in case there's rain. Um, and, you know, and, you know, these uh, impromptu dining areas are actually becoming a, um, a kind of a lifesaver for the businesses. So it's it's something that uh, like for, we've been monitoring Ben Trey right there for the last uh, uh, week or so that they've been open. And like today from their entire lunch time until about 3 p.m. Uh, they were they were packed. There was just no no tables available. And they, they seem to be following county health uh, orders for social distancing and it seems to be working, so. I just wanted to make sure uh, I update the committee on that and to kind of preface it because the next, uh, the next, uh, the next uh, task that we will um, pursue is essentially what does a permanent outdoor dining program look like? So that's something that we'll have, we're thinking uh, further ahead. Uh, right now, the, this outdoor dining program is, is valid for about 90 days and so we're, we're and we're planning to uh, bring the the program back to council for an extension of another 90 days so that it kind of can cover a lot of uh, a lot more time for these restaurants because the, unfortunately an additional 90 days is needed because of this pandemic so um, then we'll start to figure out what the a permanent version of this will look like and what what we might require as a city. So that's something that will, it's an evolving discussion and we'll bring that back to you when we have, um, when we've uh, kind of got our ducks in a row as a, for the city staff. Um, are there any comments? I, I would like to make a, a, a comment. I personally like the indoor outdoor feel of these restaurants now. I think it's, it, it's adding something to the city that I think was surprising. But that being said, um, uh, I know that some of the sidewalks, and I'm particularly talking about Linden Avenue right now, are a little narrow. Yeah. And I know, uh, I mean, it's great seeing them more taking up the, the, um, the space, but um, I'm concerned about its ability for the anyone with ADA or, or problems to to navigate that particular area. I don't know how we can deal with it. I definitely not saying that they need to close it, but I, I just think that there um, might be a little bit more forethought that's needed. And in addition, it, I, as I was driving down today, I was just thinking that at a certain point between um, where maybe a more is on Linden, and I know you're updating the sidewalk and all the way down to Grand and up, that would be a great opportunity, I thought, for safe streets. I mean, take a weekend and just close that area down and just let people have full access. Uh, you are preaching to the choir. And <laughs> okay. uh, so um, that, that was our first suggestion to, uh, well, when we brought it to council and that was the, f that was shot down so quickly. <laughs> um, is the, 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 the idea of closing down a street for anything else other than, uh, you know, the, for, the idea of closing down the street is was so unpalatable for um, council members that 
uh, and at the same time, so this is why we have this outdoor dining in the parking spaces. Um, but again, like with um, now that we are seeing uh, our parts of the street, like you know, in these areas are you know these usually it's just saved for parking and just that turnover of parking. And now here we are with this outdoor dining program and it actually activates more of that street for everybody else and not just vehicles. It, for, for me, it just, uh, it just creates the demand for, uh, you know, a, an idea that, uh, that, that we have, which is to close down the street and let this kind of, um, kind of expand even for a weekend so it, it, this is a, a mere stepping stone into that. So we're hoping that that's where it carries us and that more restaurants will participate. Um, as of most likely next week with the applications we have, we will have reached our, 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 our funding limit for the barriers. We would have, we, we, I think our pilot program only budgeted for about 70 of these, uh, these orange barriers and for, for, the protection of the outdoor dining area and by next week we will we'll, we'll, we'll hit the we'll hit the limit for our program we will every all 70 barriers would be in in use by restaurants so the more the more folks apply for it the more demand will create and at, the, at a certain point because a lot of these installations are on grand avenue you know that the next logical step and the next logical realization will be let's just close this down to so that we can save ourselves from buying or renting these barriers every time someone you know wants to do outdoor dining so we're hoping we get there uh just you know it's a visual exercise so to see the street activated is really the the first step in that okay are there any other comments okay thank you I believe we have one more item and it's uh are there any emails from the public that you received no we have not received any emails or calls from the public okay are there any committee comments and staff comments uh, none from staff okay well this is a record meeting um <laughs> well, we have a motion well excuse me Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I made a miss earlier when I couldn't get uh, my audio connected. But were we going to discuss the um, meeting change from 6 to 7 p.m.? Or are we putting that off for another time? Uh, we're putting that off for another time. It's uh, the, we right. still uh, staff will still need to uh, take a, uh, take the, these changes on these three committees. Um, uh, BPAC, Traffic Safety, and uh, Parking Place Commission to Council, and that's something we we just do not have the bandwidth for. So for now, um, we'll we'll keep the meeting time and uh, as is uh, until and but we'll make sure that if we do uh, begin that process, we'll sure. we'll let you know right away that we're likely okay. to change the time to seven. Okay. Okay. And how will you inform us by email or? Uh, every which every available method that we have, we'll bring it up. At, we'll make sure to uh, workshop that again at one of our committee meetings, and uh, then we'll have we'll still host like one of our usual meetings, and then we'll just discuss it there. And then uh, the next one will be at seven p.m. So we'll we'll try to try to give people a little bit more uh, uh, to kind of ease on to it. Okay, well, may I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Oh, wow, we have a lot of motions. Okay, may I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, opposed? Abstentions? The ayes carry it. Have a good month, everyone. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.